Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to be talking about how to make better glows inside of After Effects. Before we get started, if you want to go really in-depth on any of this, this project file will be available on our website, and the link will be in the description down below. And just a note, our $5 Patreon tier includes project files and early access to tutorials when we can. And I'm also going to turn these into presets for our upper tiers, so keep an eye out for those. All right, so if you've ever messed around in After Effects, you know that the default glow that if you apply to something like this ends up looking just kind of like that. And it's actually less than that because I have an adjustment layer on here with curves set to make the background a little bit more red. This is in the background of a few of these comps. So if you see an adjustment layer, that's what it is. And sometimes glow gives you a black border or it might completely mess up your colors. So you've probably experimented with other things like adding multiple glows on top of each other. Looks a little bit better if you add it over to different things, but then you end up in the problem where if you add it over top of something, it shows through. That can be fixed with an inverted set mat pointed at the layer that's glowing with a layer set to effects and masks. One of you guys actually saw that I was doing this on Twitter and sent me some cool presets, so I included one of those in here. And that's by Eugene. All right, hopefully I get this right. I've watched a lot of hockey. Afanaseyev. Let's just go with Eugene. I won't be distributing this one as a preset because it's Eugene's but you can check this one out and build your own. Unlike the other one where it's just applied to a single element, this one's actually applied to an adjustment layer, which I've also set to add here. And this one also kind of uses that Andrew Kramer style where you take the saturation as a mat and then plug in a solid composite behind it. And then he's using the regular glow here. And these settings actually drive the settings on the further glows that he has on here. So I believe each one of these is multiplied by three on the radius. I have it set to 0.5, but if you start off with like 0.3, you can get a lesser glow and then you can change the radius as you see fit. You can see there's a lot of different looks you can get by changing these values. Actually, I'm gonna leave it on that one, that's pretty cool. Eugene intended this to be put on a 32-bit per channel project, but I actually got it to work pretty well in 8-bit. So in my own quest for better glows, I start off with this piece of junk. And in screwing around with this, I found out that adding another layer on top made it kind of cool, but I didn't really wanna do this in multiple layers and have add modes and all sorts of different stuff. So I continued on. I like that this one actually has like some of these hits where it's kind of brighter in the middle and darker on the edges. So let me show you how I did this one. The basic idea with a version that I built is that we're taking our source and we're blurring it out. Since that's going to fade out, we're using CC Composite to composite the source back on top. We have RGB only unchecked because that's going to start to use the alpha that we're building. And we want it to take the original alpha so that we're basically adding something back on top that we can blur every time. So these things get stacked on top of each other so that the blur can spread out but not lose its intensity toward the actual object that we're blurring. So if we turn on these off, you can see I have a box blur here. I have it set to 28 pixels. And I'm trying to maintain the bright areas where there's the higher concentration of the line so that those glows kind of add together. So as we fade these things out, we add another CC composite back in, again with RGB off, set to 100% and add. So if you've gotten the idea so far, what we're doing is building out the farthest part of the glow first and then adding over smaller and smaller glows. Then I have another box blur, same settings, 28 and 1. It's just to thicken it up. You could probably also use levels set to alpha or even curves set to alpha, but this is the way I went. Then on top of that, we're adding another CC composite, again, 100% and add. Then I have a Gaussian blur set to 200, and this could be tweaked down to like 150. I just wanted to fill in this gap, so 200 seemed to be about there. By default, repeat edge pixels is off, but you should probably turn it back on. There's probably not that much of a render hit, and if you make this into a preset, you're gonna want that. So then we have another CC composite, RGB only off. Gaussian blur again, 20 this time. And that's just to provide a glow that's closer to where we've just put everything in. So we're gonna add another CC composite. And then I have a hue saturation. What normally happens is that you're adding these things all together and you end up with a color that's different than what you started with. And I found that somewhere between the range of like negative eight to negative 16 degrees on the hue will get you back to about where you were. It's also helpful to start with a color that's not super bright and saturated as it tends to make the glow look a little better because there's room for it to get brighter. You can also add something like fractal noise in between to break it up and give it some variation. And then one of the things that I added to this thing, if you see the edge doesn't really have any kind of definition, so I put another Minimax just to bring it back in by one pixel. It's only set to color, not alpha. We just want to take that color back just a smidge. There's other ways to do this, like bevel alpha. This is just the way that I went. You could probably even use layer styles. I just tend to use effects instead. Let me show you another way to get this edge. If we turn off these last effects, uh, actually, let's leave that one on. All right, so if I go back in, I can add another Gaussian Blur, set this to like two, and then we can CC Composite over top of this thing, 
turn that on. We do this at like five. You can see it kind of rounds everything out. Did you get that hot spot still by adding the composite back on top along with this feathered edge? So if you go back out, it still look like that, which is still pretty cool. But I'm gonna undo because that's not really the way I was going with this thing. So adding that last one on top looks kind of nice. So maybe we'll do this. So there we go. Off, on. A lot of these settings can actually be accelerated with your GPU, but you have to go into the project settings to do that. So to do that, you just go over here where it says eight bits per channel, click on that to change your project settings. And if you go over here to video rendering and effects, you can change things in here. If you're on a Mac, you'll have metal. Otherwise I believe you'll just have OpenCL and Mercury software. By default, this is usually set to Mercury software. So you actually have to change this. And I think this is actually retained. So once you change it, you're pretty good. So that's why I chose this particular effects stack. So then I applied it to something else, which is our logo. While one of my main complaints with glow is that sometimes it'll glow black. The reason why this is actually doing that is because this is black. So let me open this up. You can see we're basically doing the same thing. Fast blur, CC composite, fast blur. But I have a fill in here. And what this is doing is giving us a different color in between so that basically these back glows are more orange than they are yellow. And the reason why I added that in is because in the final animation, you notice that this is very orange around the edges. And that's due to the way that these things are adding together because I actually have a layer in here that's called broken neon flow. And it's actually just dots in between to kind of simulate with a neon or whatever gas makes yellow has issues flowing through the tubes. And when we set this layer to overlay, we get an orange that we don't have in the first version, but we can add that orange back in there with a fill. One thing that's also useful is that because of how fill works, when you change the opacity, you actually kill the opacity of the layer itself. You can also use this to adjust the amount of glow. So if you want these things to still have the same kind of spread, but you want it to have less intensity, that's a good way to do it. Then we're just CC compositing, blurring, CC compositing, blurring, CC compositing, hue sat it back, and Minimax again to bring that edge in. And then after that version, I brought it in here to animate it. You can see I have a base layer, which is this black piece that you see before everything animates up. I have the glow, which is animated together using that tutorial that we did a couple weeks back on linked paths. I'll link that down below if you want to see how that's done. I initially had this glow layer set to just trim paths on this whole thing to just cut out this piece, but that actually was more of a pain to animate. So I just went in Illustrator and chopped it. And on top, I have this warm up adjustment and that's set to use exposure. So that kind of simulates the neon warming up. And I did like two seconds of research and I think it's actually helium that's in the tubes to make yellow. That's something else you can actually learn from this tutorial. Neon lights are not all neon. Neon is usually just the red ones. There's just other gases used in different lights. We just call them all neon for some reason, I guess because red was the most popular. I, I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this week. Make sure that you explore this technique. Obviously, there's a billion different ways to do this thing. You can add all sorts of stuff in between. So it's really important that you mess with the effect and see what you come up with. Turn it into a preset when you're done, then you can reuse it over and over again. Anyway, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up the vlog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.